Jesus, Jesus, Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus when the sun goes down, we will love him, love him, love him in the morning, love him in the noontime, love him, love him, we'll love him when the sun goes down, so we will serve him, serve him, serve him in the morning, serve him in the noontime, serve him, serve him, serve him when the sun goes down, and he will love us, love us he'll love us in the morning he'll love us in the noontime he'll love us yes love us jesus loves us when the sun goes down hallelujah to the lamb welcome to the reading of the word of god on this beautiful february 12. beautiful february 12. We will be reading from Exodus 34 today. Exodus 34, Moshe, Moses spent time on the mountain with the Lord. He gave him these wonderful cut commandments in stone, brought them back, found the people in sin, found them in sin. So what happens next? Well, the Lord is gracious and he says he'll do it again. So let's see how this is worded, okay? Welcome to each one of you. <clears throat> Sorry, I was just a tad late this morning. Exodus 34, And the Lord said to Moses, Cut two tablets of stone like the first ones, and I will write on these tablets the words that were on the first tablets which you broke. So be ready in the morning and come up in the morning to Mount Sinai and present yourself to me there on the top of the mountain. And no man shall come up with you. And let no man be seen throughout all the mountain. Let neither flocks nor herds feed before that mountain. Solitude. It is a one-on-one -on -one meeting. Nobody but the Lord and Moses. So, he cut two tablets of stone like the first ones. And then Moshe rose early in the morning and he went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him. And he took in his hand the two tablets of stone. Now the Lord descended in the cloud and stood with him there and proclaimed the name of the Lord. And the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, The Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth, keeping mercy for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin, by no means clearing the guilty visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children and the children's children to the third and fourth generation. Boy, that will command you to attention, won't it? So Moses made haste and bowed his head toward the earth and he worshiped. And then he said, If now I have found grace in your sight, O Lord, let my Lord, I pray, go among us, even though we are a stiff-necked people, and pardon our iniquity and our sin, and take us as your inheritance. And he said, Behold, I make a covenant. Before all your people I will do marvels such as have not been done in all the earth, nor in any nation, and all the people among whom you are shall see the work of the Lord, 
for it is an awesome thing that I will do with you. Observe what I command you this day. Behold, I am driving out before you the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite and the Hevite and the Jebusite. Take heed to yourself, lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land where you are going, lest it be a snare in your midst. But you shall destroy their altars, break their sacred pillars, and cut down their wooden images. For you shall worship no other god. For the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous God. <clears throat> Let's not forget that, you and I, down here in our day and age. He's a jealous God for our love. Lest you make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they play the harlot with their gods, and make sacrifice to their gods, and one of them invites you, and you eat of his sacrifice, and you take of his daughters for your sons, and his daughters play the harlot with their gods, and make your sons play the harlot with their gods. You shall make no molded gods for yourselves. The feast of unleavened bread you shall keep. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread, as I commanded you in the appointed time of the month of Abib. For in the month of Abib you came out from Egypt. All that open the womb are mine, and every male firstborn among your livestock, whether ox or sheep. But the firstborn of a donkey you shall redeem with a lamb. <clears throat> How about that? And if you will not redeem him, then you shall break his neck. All the firstborn of your sons you shall redeem, and none shall appear before me empty-handed. Six days you shall work, but on the seventh day you shall rest. In plowing time and in harvest you shall rest. And you shall observe the feast of weeks, of the first fruits of wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Three times in the year all your men shall appear before the Lord, <clears throat> the Lord God of Israel. For I will cast out the nations before you and enlarge your borders. Neither will any man covet your land when you go up to appear before the Lord your God three times in the year. You shall not offer the blood of my sacrifice with leaven, nor shall the sacrifice of the feast of the Passover be left until morning. The first of the firstfruits of your land you shall bring to the house of the Lord your God. You shall not boil a young goat in its mother's milk. Bokatov on Rishan, the head the first day of the week. Oh, good. Scott, lay it on us about what we are reading here. Give us the information that we need to understand. Thank you so much for your time and your care for us. God bless you. All I can think about is your mom and dad. Then the Lord said to Moses, write these words, for according to the tenor of these words, I have made a covenant with you with Israel. So he was there with the Lord 40 days and 40 nights. He neither ate bread nor drank water. Imagine that, 40 days with no water. And he wrote on the tablets the words of the covenant, the Ten Commandments. Not suggestions, commandments. 
Now it was so when Moshe came down from Mount Sinai and the two tablets of the testimony were in Moses' hand when he came down from the mountain that Moses, Moshe, did not know that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. So when Aaron and all the children of Israel saw Moshe, behold, the skin of his face shone. The skin. Got that? The skin shone. And they were afraid to come near him. And then Moshe called to them, and Aaron and all the rulers of the congregation returned to him. And Moshe talked with them. And afterward, all the children of Israel came near and he gave them as commandments all that the Lord had spoken with him on Mount Sinai. And when Moshe had finished speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. But whenever Moshe went in before the Lord to speak with him, he would take the veil off until he came out. And he would come out and speak to the children of Israel, whatever he had been commanded. And whenever the children of Israel saw the face of Moshe, that the skin of Moshe's face shone, then Moshe would put the veil on his face again until he went in to speak with him. And we move right along to what has been determined as chapter 35. Although Scott has told us before, originally they didn't number, they didn't number through the word like we have here. The word was just written out, all of it. And then Moshe gathered all the congregation of the children of Israel together. And he said to them, these are the words which the Lord has commanded you to do. Work shall be done for six days, but the seventh day shall be a holy day for you. Are you listening up? Because what is today? A Shabbat of rest, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it shall be put to death. You shall kindle no fire throughout your dwellings on the Shabbat day. And Scott, perhaps you could make a little comment about the difference between saying Sabbath or Shabbat. And Moshe spoke to all the congregation of the children of Israel, saying, this is the thing which the Lord commanded, saying, take from among you an offering to the Lord. Whoever is of a willing heart, let him bring it as an offering to the Lord. Gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, fine linen, and goat's hair, ram skins dyed with red, badger skins, and acacia wood, oil, for the light and spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense, onyx stones and stones to be set in the ephod and in the breastplate. Wow. Detailed instructions. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We move right along to the New Testament, the New Covenant. Matthew, we are in chapter 27, picking up with verse 15. Matthew, Matthew, chapter 27, verse 15. Now, at the feast of the governor was a custom to releasing to the multitude one prisoner whom they wished. And at that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release to you? 
Barabbas, or Jesus, who is called Christ? For he knew that they had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent to him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things today in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and the elders persuaded the multitudes that they should ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release to you? And they said, Barabbas. And Pilate said to them, What then shall I do with Jesus, Yeshua, who is called Christ? They all said to him, Let him be crucified. And then the governor said, Why? What evil has he done? But they cried out all the more, saying, Let him be crucified. <clears throat> and when Pilate saw that he could not prevail at all, but rather that a tumult was rising, he took water and he washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person. You see to it. And all the people answered and said, a very dangerous, a very dangerous sentence. His blood be on us and on our children. Let that sink in a minute. And then he released Barabbas to them. And when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. And then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the praetorium and they gathered the whole garrison around him and they stripped him and they put a scarlet robe on him. And when they had twisted a crown of thorns, they put it on his head and a reed in his right hand. And I've always wondered about further meaning, Scott, on this reed in his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him and they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And then they spat on him. And they took the reed and they struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they took the robe off him, put his own clothes on him, and led him away to be crucified. <clears throat> A very angry scene, but prophesied and fulfilled by Yeshua HaMashiach. We move right along to Psalm 32. Psalm 32, we will pick up with verse 12. Psalm, or I mean 33, excuse me. <laughs> Psalm 33, picking up with verse 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he has chosen as his own inheritance, the Lord looks from heaven. He sees all the sons of men. From the place of his dwelling, he looks on all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashions their hearts individually. He considers all their works. No king is saved by the multitude of an army. A mighty man is not delivered by great strength. A horse is a vain hope for safety. Neither shall it deliver any by its great strength. 
Behold, the eye of the Lord is on those who fear him, on those who hope in his mercy to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waits for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him because we have trusted in his holy name. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, lest just as we hope in you. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful cry. Those are beautiful words. Let your mercy, O Lord, be upon us just as we hope in you. And we move right along in the wonderful book of Mishle, the Proverbs. We will begin chapter 9. Chapter 9, <clears throat> and we're still being told a lot of things about wisdom. Wisdom has built her house. Imagine that. Feminine gender. Wisdom is called. Wisdom has built her house. She has hewn out her seven pillars. She has slaughtered her meat. She has mixed her wine. She has also furnished her table. She has sent out her maidens. She cries out from the highest places of the city. And we're talking about wisdom. Whoever is simple, let him turn in here. As for him who lacks understanding, she says to him, Come, eat of my bread, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness, and live, and go in the way of understanding walk in that way, the way of understanding. Oh my goodness, these are precious and powerful words, words to live by. We all need wisdom today, not the world's wisdom. It's a mess. Quite frankly, it's just a mess. We need the wisdom of the Lord God. We need the wisdom that is in his word and his word alone. His word is the only word that's never going to change. The Lord is not going to change his word. Fulfilling was the whole purpose and intent and ministry of the Lord to fulfill. And let's just remind each other that that's the, same, that's the same calling you and I have, to fulfill his word in our life according to how he has his path laid out for us. Each one of us has a different path, don't we? But the fellowship of all of the body together is what is so precious. So precious. We need to rise up boldly today and share the word of God with everyone. Get it in there, whether they want to hear it or not. You might only have one opportunity. All right, let's wrap it up with prayer. <clears throat> Precious, wonderful, wonderful Father God, Adonai, Elohim, oh my, you are high. You are high and lifted up. You are seated on the throne, your whole throne room filled with angels singing, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God. They bow down, they worship. And Lord, that's what our hearts want to do. Worship you understand you, have wisdom of you, be enthralled with you to live out our lives minute by minute, 
following you. Holy Spirit, Ruach HaKodesh, please come. Come and be with each one and bring wisdom. Come and be our guide. We are told that that, that is your calling. That is your job. You are our guide, but we must let you. We must be willing. So Lord, work with our hearts. Work with these earthly minds that we keep our attention on you, that we keep serving you, that we keep walking away from the things of the world. Just walk on. Don't even try to explain it. Just talk of the Lord and walk on. Be a shining, smiling witness. Let them wonder what you have, and they will come and ask. We need to have the peace of the Lord in these troubled times. We need to have the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. So we call out to you, Lord, and we ask. That's what we ask for. We ask for your joy, your wisdom your knowledge, your presence, your Ruach HaKodesh to guide us. Lord, we pray earnestly for the peace of Jerusalem today. Let peace be within her borders. We pray, Lord, for the Knesset. We pray for Bibi Netanyahu. Lord, please give them your wisdom Cause them to make righteous decisions. We bless you for it, Lord. There it is, tiny little Israel, right in the midst of great gobs of land of enemies. But your right hand has covered them. The blood of Yeshua HaMashiach has been shed there and fulfilled. And so, Lord, your plans march on. They march on today. Help us, Lord, to be tuned in to the Holy Ghost. That we might not miss the way that you have for us. Cause us, Lord, to seek you with all our hearts today. Lord, we'd ask that you would take this troubled, messed up United States where we live, and we pray for her, Lord. We pray for her. We pray that every last good, wonderful thing that you want to bring from this country, this nation, these people, Lord, please guide us into it. Let the church rise up, Lord. Let the church become strong. Let it be this foundation of you. <clears throat> that many will run into it, run into it, be born again, that salvation will be everywhere, that many will be saved from going to hell, saved out of that and walking a righteous path. We hold up friends, Lord, and relatives. We hold up those who need healing, healing, not only in their bodies, but in their souls, in their minds, in their hearts. Oh, please, Father God, healing, deliverance. There are those that we absolutely need to command spirits to come out of. They cannot figure out what's wrong with them. Lord, give us spiritual insight, spiritual eyes, spiritual ears a spiritual hunger and thirst for more and more of you. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory. All the praise and glory, Lord, goes to you. And in the days to come, Lord, we are asking, would you please cause righteous people to fill the seats to fill the seats, Lord, of governing. Please, Lord, nothing is impossible with you. 
Nothing shall be impossible with you. Lord, help us not to not to speak defeat, not, not to speak heady-minded words, but to speak out of love, to speak out of care for every person that you have in our lives. Let us be the best example. Let us be the person that they come to because they see joy, they see strength. So, Lord, we ask for this new infilling for this day, new infilling for this day. And all of God's people went ahead with their own private prayers, worshiping the Lord and resting in him. I love you so much. Bye-bye.